you're you're not against the government actually acting in to ensure to help the safety of citizens can you talk a little bit about what what would a what would a government surveillance program that is legal and effective look like for you well the first point here is to recognize uh, that the nature of open societies free societies right uh, nations at liberty uh, is that life does entail some measure of risk you're only going to be perfectly protected if you sort of uh, bury yourself under the ground or you live in a prison. And then uh, you'll still be at risk from the inmates who sort of are walking the asylum with you. Uh, life involves risk. It involves choice. It involves contest. That's where it derives its value from. That's where we progress from. We are tested every day by our environment. Uh, now, that doesn't mean we, we sort of uh, open the vest and assume that we should be vulnerable to any actor anywhere who wants to do us harm. Now, of course, we should take reasonable measures and we should work to create capabilities and measures uh, that allow us to identify wrongdoers and punish the wicked uh, as things have always worked throughout sort of human history. Now, the method of law enforcement that we know works has been the model for thousands of years uh, that has done so. And that is that we use a, what's called a particularity requirement, which is really what the Fourth Amendment is about uh, in, in legal terms. The idea is we don't have a general warrant where the court says that anybody you think might be related to some class of activity, whether that's political or you want to call it radicalism uh, or anything like that, uh, you just go, well, we think they're like that, so we're going to look at them. Uh, instead, you need some probable cause uh, that you can demonstrate to a court, right? This isn't just a gut feeling. You have to be able to lay out the evidence that this individual is engaged in some kind of wrongdoing, that they are a criminal. And it meets a threshold uh, that allows the court and the public sort of by proxy to go the interest in uh, sort of limiting these rights for this particular period of investigation uh, for the public outweighs that of the natural right that we all enjoy to be left alone without reasonable cause. Now, this is what has changed uh, in the wake of 9-11 and particularly uh, what 2013 revealed. Um, if the government is targeting a particular device uh, of an individual or they're trying to tap a phone of an office that they know is involved in mob activity, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what we've always done. We've done this for hundreds of years. Uh, we have to have those methods of investigation, but at the same time, pre-criminal investigation that is watching all of us all of the time because we might someday become interesting, right? They want to go back in time uh, and look at all the records that they correct, collected in advance. Uh, the government calls this bulk collection. Everyone else calls it mass surveillance. Um, and say, well, you know, you've come to our attention today, but we know what you did on, you know, uh, June 5th, 1992, and we don't like that. That's a problem because it radically reorders the balance of power in society. Uh, it is preemptively uh, restricting our rights without any cause to do so, uh, to create a sort of surveillance time machine that allows them to go back uh, and say, no matter what you've done, uh, we know what that was. We can analyze you, we can assess you. And why this matters is it's no longer justice, it's only order. And these are very different things.